Welcome to the most listened to golf in the world, the Fairways of Life show, on air, online, and around the world, with the most candid interviews, unforgettable stories, taking you beyond the ropes. Here's your host, New York Times best-selling author, Matt Adams. As we welcome you into the Fairways of Life show, folks, welcoming you from coast to coast in the United States. And for those of you joining us around the world, good day one and all. Still looking back and recounting all of the things that took place in the world of golf in the last couple of days because that Masters was quite incredible indeed. Congratulations to Scotty Scheffler with his breakthrough. This is a big week, too. I mean, you've got another major championship in golf. You've got Nellie Corda trying to go for a fifth in a row and a second major for her also. It was a second major for Scotty Scheffler. Uh, he did it at 27 years, 9 months, and 24 days. It was his 120th start for Scotty Scheffler. He now has nine PGA Tour victories to his credit. He breaks a tie with John Rahm for the most wins, and that would be since Scheffler joined the tour at the start of the 2019-2020 season with that. He actually has multiple wins at four different PGA Tour events. The Masters, obviously, now twice at 22 and 24. The Players in 23, 24, back-to-back. The Arnold Palmer Invitational, uh, presented by MasterCard in 22 and 24, and the WM Phoenix Open in 22 and 23. He likes to win in bunches. Well, that's because he just started winning a few years ago, and he's doing it now with great regularity. That second major championship for Scheffler came in his 18th start at a major, he is, and, and these are the numbers that I love. And I want to go through those last 10 starts that Andrew just put up in just one second. It's, he's the 88th player to win multiple men's majors. Only 88. Think about that for a second. All time. He's the first to accomplish it since John Rahm did when he won the 2023 Masters. He won that second Masters tournament. In his fifth start, he's the 18th player to win the Masters multiple times and the first to accomplish the feat since Bubba Watson in 2014. He's the fourth youngest player to win the Masters multiple times. And to that, I got to tell you, because the list is incredible. Those four in front of him, Jack Nicklaus at 25 years, two months, and 21 days, He had his second one in 1965. Tiger Woods, at 25 years, three months, in nine days, his second one in 2001. Seve Ballesteros, at 26 years, two days, in 1983. And then Scotty, as I mentioned, at 27 years, nine months, and 24 days. Very, very impressive indeed. Now, let's, if you don't mind, Andrew, let's pull back up that graphic on what he's done in his last 10 events. And we've got a friend and an expert coming on, a, a voice and a face I know you'll recognize from, from the broadcasting that he does and what his voice means to the world of golf in bringing you the action week in and week out. And I can't wait to go through some of this with, with him and his recollection of what's going on with Scotty Scheffler, what's going on in the world of golf, and the whole question of where does Scotty fit right now? Here's what he's done his last 10. Okay, the Hero World Challenge, that's a win. I get it. Limited field, off season. I know. But from that, from that point on, and I'm not taking it away from the Hero World Challenge, it's, it's a great field, but from that point on is when it really matters. Tied for fifth at the Century. Tied for 17th at the American Express. Kind of like, okay, it's all right. It's, 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 it's not a look like a world-beating start, but then it's, you start to get a little bit of message. It's tied for six at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. And if memory serves me at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, I think his amateur partner was David Abel. He's from TaylorMade, his equipment company. Good guy. He's going to be joining us on the Fairways of Life show this week. Then he had a tie for third at the WM Phoenix Open. He's had a lot of success there. Loves the place. Also kind of gives you an idea of his mental solitude, his focus. Tied for 10th at the Genesis Invitational. Then he goes. He wins at the API. He wins back-to-back at the players. You kidding me? Two grays putts away from winning at the Houston Open, tie for second result. And then he wins the Masters 
again. It is simply incredible what we're seeing from Scotty Scheffler. And it raises that question that we will be discussing coming up on today's show, which is where do we place Scotty Scheffler right now? In the immediacy of something of this magnitude, and yes, I am talking obviously about his victory at the Masters, but I'm also talking about the run-up to it. Where do you place him? Because I think that we all tend to overreact with a present day conceit and say that this player is, and we, and we, we place him immediately amongst the golfing gods, right? But how far away is he from that status? Again, you look at it, you go, oh, he's, he's had a lot of wins in a short period of time and wins of significance, but he's only got nine of them, which isn't, ta- I'm not trying to take anything away from a guy that's 27 years old. That's now a multiple time champion. He's been world number one for a long time, but world number one now has, we all know it has an asterisk against it because world number one is measured against those who are being measured. And there's a lot of top players that we were able to see him competing against in a major championship that was very exciting because we had the whole world of golf in one place at one time again. And boy, did he compete. So yes, that goes into the gumbo, that goes into the mix of that judgment. And I'm curious what you guys think about that and and where it stands. If you want to weigh in on our question of the day or be a part of our live program discussion board, just log on to the Fairways of Life YouTube channel and you'll find it right there. So let's start with that, Dom. Ask uh, what I want to ask you about the question of the day. What is your question of the day today? Is it something relative to Scotty Scheffler? As I suspect. It sure is. And it's a really good question. All right. <laughs> it's its own show. It's, it's its own show. First of all, I love the Masters. God, I love golf. I'm, I am so obsessed. So many years of doing this, and I'm still obsessed. Um, the pressure when they, when they make that turn, it's just, you can like feel it. Wherever you are in the world watching, you can feel it. Here's the question of the day. Who is the best player in the world right now? Is it Scotty Scheffler or is it Nelly Korda? That's tough, man. Oh, that's a really good question. That's a super good question. It's a good very question. good question. What was you it? Just when showed we did the, the... You just showed the finishes for, hold on, you just showed the finishes for uh, Scheffler. Yeah. Andrew, y- you can leave those up if you want. I'm going to read Nelly's last few events. All right. Okay. Um, win. Win. Um, let me check here. Yeah. Win. Uh, the next one is, or is a win. <laughs> And then she had a 16th, an 8th, a 25th, a 6th, and a 16th. Pretty good, Matt. So she got Pretty the engine good. running, and, and she has taken off, too. So uh, as I mentioned, when, when we have our guest up, I want to ask him about uh, Nelly Corda, too. I want to particularly ask him, as he's an expert in this area as well, about the golf swing of Nelly Corda, both from the standpoint of symmetry, balance, power, consistency, but also what can we learn from, from all of the same. Now, uh, as to... Augusta National. I want to pull up this graphic in terms of how the course was playing because we all know that it was absolutely brutal those first two rounds. Maybe not early, early, early in round one, but pretty much all day on Friday, uh, it it was very harsh. Round one, 73.42. Dom was scurrying through X today and found some Justin Ray stats that all-time first-round highest scoring average was 78.6. That was in 1936, only it wasn't the Masters then. It was then known as the Augusta National Invitational. Round two scoring average, 75.07. This, the scoring average of 75.07 represents the highest scoring average since 2007 when it was 75.6. Three. No rest for the weary at 74.3 in round three, and then 72.48 in the final round. There were 11 rounds in the 60s on Sunday, and eight players overall finished under par. At the top of the leaderboard, though, was Scotty Scheffler finishing clear by four strokes at 11 under par. It was a, call it a slow start for Scotty Scheffler. Uh, you, you, I suppose you could because he was one over par through seven holes, but then he did Scotty Scheffler type things. 
after a bogey at seven. He birdies the par five eighth, and then what he did at nine is a shot. That second shot is is going to be remembered, I think, with associated with this win at the Masters forever and ever and ever. It was absolutely incredible. So he birdies eight, nine, and ten before he slows down with a bogey at eleven. But as you saw on that chart that we put up there about the difficulty of the holes, then you saw where 11 fits in, where 5 fits in. That 11th hole, scoring average of 4.38, toughest for the week. The 18th hole was second for the week at 4.37. Would you have guessed that? Coming into this week's Masters, would you have guessed that it'd be the second hardest? And for much of the tournament, it was running as hardest before the 11th asserted itself. The third hardest, and you can see it's all just razor-thin margins here, was the fifth hole. Right, so with Scotty Scheffler, part of, I think, understanding who he is and where he fits is for us to understand Scotty Scheffler from a fan's perspective. Do you like him? Does he have the it factor? Do you see him as a dominating player, and how would you define the same? Scotty Scheffler started on Sunday by talking about his victory, what it means for him. The obligatory question is going to be, how does this change you? How does this change things in your life? You're now a multiple-time major champion. Scotty said, and I'm quoting, it's hard to put into words how special this is. It's been a long week. It's been a grind of a week. The golf course was so challenging. And to be sitting here wearing this jacket again and getting to take it home was extremely special. I feel like I'm playing really good golf right now. I feel like I'm in control of my emotions as I've ever been, which is a good place to be. I feel like I'm maturing as a person on the golf course, which is a good place to be. Well, part of that maturing process, part of that perspective, as, we're, as we've learned from Scotty Scheffler, is clearly anchored in his faith, but it's also anchored in what's going to be a new reality for him and that he and his wife, Meredith, are waiting for their first child. He said to that, when it comes to having a kid, every single person says that it changes your life and it's the most special thing in the world. So I cannot. Marriage has been such a tremendous aspect of my life. I cannot even imagine what being a parent is going to be like. All I can think about right now is getting home. I'm not thinking about the tournament. I'm not thinking about the green jacket. I'm trying to answer your questions, and I'm trying to get home. I will go home, soak in this victory tonight. We'll definitely enjoy the birth of my first child. But that being said, I still love competing. My priorities will change here very soon. My son or daughter will now be the main priority along with my wife. So golf will now be probably fourth in line, which is fascinating. But then all of a sudden, we delve into the mind of the competitor. This is the warrior mindset where Scotty said, and I love this quote. I was sitting around with my buddies this morning. I was a bit overwhelmed. I told them, I wish I didn't want to win as badly as I did or as badly as I do. I think it would make the mornings easier. But I love winning. I hate losing. I really do. And when you're here in the biggest moments and when you're sitting there with the lead on Sunday, I really, really want to win badly. And my buddies told me this morning, my victory was secure on the cross. And that's a pretty special feeling to know I'm secure forever. And it doesn't matter If I win this tournament or lose this tournament, my identity is secure forever. Close quotes from Scotty Scheffler. So it gives you a sense of his emotional foundation finished with these quotes. I try to compete to the best of my abilities. Like I said, I really want to win. I feel like that's how I was designed. I've been that way since I was a young kid. That's always been a part of me, and I don't think that there should be going away, and that should be going away anytime soon. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that either, close quote, just to finish those, which raises the, the question in my mind that I've, it, I've, I've always had this suspicion in two areas in particular in golf, in putting 
but in your ability to handle stress at the at the highest moments, is it in some way a natural gift? Right? Because the narrative of sport, all sports, is that the the individual is tough, that somehow an individual is tougher than another. And I've always questioned that, to be fair. I've always wondered if someone of the likes of a Jack Nicholas just is wired differently than normal. They have this ability to handle pressure that crushes everybody else. And, and, and with, with all due respect to, to the idea of someone that's tough, I'm not taking that away, but, but as, as a relative comparison, I think about someone like uh, you know, Larry Nelson, who saw heavy frontline action in Vietnam. He heard the bullets spitting over his head. Are you going to tell me that Larry Nelson, a three-time major champion Hall of Famer, isn't tough? Because we use it as a comparison to, to the amount of tournaments won as an example or major tournaments won? I don't know. I just don't buy that. I see players from other sports that come in and they'll play, say, in a pro-am, a football player, a linebacker, one of the toughest people in the world. You could literally run through a wall. You tell me they're not tough, but they're scared to death when they're on the golf course, different field. I get it. But I just think that there's something to that. I, I, I'd love to, to, to delve into that a little bit more. And I, I honestly, I feel kind of the same way about putting. If you talk to good putters, it's classic. Because if you talk to a good putter, they're so uncluttered in the complexity of, of putting, their, their answers more or less are just that uh, you look at the target and you react. Dave Stockton famously tells me, you try not to try. Uh, okay. To sort through these questions and more, we'll be back right after this in the Fairways of Life show with a very special gift. It's, it is presented by the PGA Tour Superstore. They are the number one golf retailer in all of the land from coast to coast. In fact, there are 68 of them right now, these big, beautiful stores spreading out where within you can find whatever you're looking for for your game, whether you swing it, whether you wear it, whether you need to learn from it. And I think the best part of it is knowing that you are actually shopping with pros. Where? At your happy place. Every January, PGA Tour Superstore Pros meet every manufacturer, learn about the latest equipment, log thousands of hours of training, and together hit over 100,000 balls, all so they can get you the perfect fit. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses all set alongside world-famous scenery and visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. Ben Hogan Golf Equipment is back. Established in 1953, we serve golfers who demand excellence of their equipment. Designed by the game's best engineers, forged in the world's best foundries, and built to order in the USA. Don't settle for off-the-rack disappointment. Elevate your game with custom clubs at direct consumer pricing. Exclusively at BenHoganGolf.com. That's BenHoganGolf.com. The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team. The absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're going to love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball? Nah. Football? Got it. I think I'm going to go after PGA Tour. Playing on the PGA Tour is not easy. But you know what is easy? Hitting the 524 Series from Tour Edge. Hitting linebackers and home runs used to be easy. Out here, you're going to need all the easy you can get. Introducing the 524 Series from Tour Edge. The easiest clubs you'll ever hit. Even the best players in the world can use a little easy. I like the sound of that. 
Look out, PGA Tour. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship-caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. As we welcome you back to the Fairways of Life show, delighted to have your company, folks. Matt Adams here with you. Dom and Andrew are behind the glass. Uh, my guest over the next couple segments is Mark Immelman. You probably know Mark uh, because of his golf broadcasting with CBS, with PGA Tour Live. Uh, he's the host of the On The Mark podcast, where you can find wherever you get your audio content. He has a new book coming out, which I'm going to talk to him uh, in a couple of segments from now. The new book is called Lessons From The Best, Holistic Insights, Tips, and tricks to improve your golf. Uh, the forward was written in that book by Jim Nance. Uh, but what you may not be aware of is that Mark has long been one of the preeminent experts on the golf swing and his credibility in that regard, whether you talk about it from teaching the best of the best at the highest tiers of the game uh, to coaching at the collegiate level. And that is the golf swing and understanding it in a way that few have before him or since. And we were, I want to discuss that with him too and pick up from there. Mark, first of all, welcome into the show. A pleasure to have your company. Let's start with what you saw from Scotty Scheffler. Uh, Scotty's performance, uh, it's like he jumped into a phone booth after the seventh hole on Sunday and became super Scotty. Kind, in many ways, kind of became the Scotty Scheffler that we were expecting as well, in fairness. But overall, I want to just start with your impressions of the Masters, your impressions of how tough it was, and then we'll dive into Scotty in particular. Well, Matty, it's uh, it's so good to be with you. Um, I'm coming down from what was, once again, just an incredible event. Um, it's uncanny to me how every year the Masters just finds a way to to, to deliver storylines that are unmatched. And, and as it pertains to Scotty, uh, you know, it's it's amazing to me how he fills so he checks so many boxes, and I, I just want to hearken back to the founder and co-founder, I should say, of of the Augusta National Golf Club, and that's Bob Jones. And Bob Jones said that in golf, you have to beat somebody. You just have to make sure that that somebody is not yourself. Mm. And then he also said that you know the key to golf is to turn three strokes into two. And Scotty Scheffler last week showed exactly that. He didn't just not beat himself. He allowed or, or created the presence, if you will, um, where the other golfers sort of beat themselves. And he just did Scotty Scheffler. And he's got that unreal ability to remain present, to remain poised, uh, sort of to, to just keep doing his thing despite all the mayhem going around me. I know you can appreciate this. You, uh, a poet yourself, um, you know the poem If by Rudyard Kipling? Yes. To me... Scotty Scheffler embodies everything in that poem, how he's like, when all else is going wrong around you, you can still, you know, keep your head um, where you can meet triumph and disaster, both imposters with the same attitude. This is who he is. And to me, it was, it was such an incredible performance, given the fact that he came in as the resounding favorites. And you look at John Rahm for argument six, defending champion, you could almost see the pressure of defending the pressure of trying to prove a point, maybe, uh, just etched all over his comportment where Scotty was like, I'm just playing golf. I know I'm the best. If I just hang around and do my thing, I'm going to be in the mix Sunday afternoon. And he was. And to his credits, he didn't just uh, he didn't just win. He won. He won going away. And it was impressive stuff. How tough. And I realize this is a broad brush question, and, and I mean it to be. It, it, for your reaction, how tough were the conditions, particularly uh, in the in the from middle of the day onward in round one, two, and into three? Two and three were as hard as I've seen. In fact, I caught up with my brother Trevor um, maybe Saturday morning, 
And I said to him, hey, Friday felt like Sunday in 2008 because the year my brother won that Sunday was just ghastly. The year before was kind of the same thing with Zach Johnson in the final round where it was cold and really windy. Uh, Trevor's conditions were sort of warm-ish, but really windy, gusting. And that just makes all those holes so challenging, especially around A-Main Corner. I mean, we saw uh, the 11th hole play almost three quarters of a stroke over par in round two. It was playing like a par five. And then the 12th hole was as, as, as innocuous looking as what it is and how beautiful it is. It was dastardly. I mean, that place was devilish. And, and then 13, you think you can make one back. But with the blustery winds, five was also a good score. So in many respects, I feel like Friday, par was a really good score. Um, in very many respects, Saturday, I think it was the same kind of deal. Testament, in my opinion, to the committee, the setup committee, um, Bob Jones also said that if you play well, you should be able to shoot something in the 60s. Well, Ludwig Aberg shot 69 Friday, which was a manful round. And Saturday, we saw a few rounds in the 60s too. So it was very, very hard, but still, somehow they made it fair. Uh, it, it, all of that is incredibly impressive. Uh, the golf course was clearly very, very difficult. I, I know uh, Rom was amongst those that was suggesting that maybe at times the wind was too severe and they should have been uh, a delay uh, because of uh, potentially balls oscillating or movement. I didn't see that. I didn't hear that that was happening, but nonetheless, that was mentioned. I'm curious about where Scotty Scheffler fits after this. I think in the immediacy of something of this stature, winning a second major championship and the run that he's been on, winning three or four and a tie for second in the other event that he's in, that we tend as fans, as journalists, to overplace people from a historic standpoint. Is that even mm -hmm. possible with Scotty Scheffler? Where do you think he fits? Well, I'll say this, and this is with immediate respect to what he's just achieved, not just the victory, but the run he's on, where he's won three of the last four, and the one he didn't win, he had a putt to get into a playoff. There you have the list of major championship um, winners. Um, I want to say this, in my experiences, being alongside folks who have won major championships, the difference between zero and one is gigantic. The difference between one and two is even bigger. The difference between two and three is even bigger than that. And then as we venture further into these upper reaches of major championship uh, success and wins, each victory just seems farther away because you are venturing where angels fear to tread, if you will. And, and we can see that with Rory, how, you know, he's had a Hall of Fame career. And if he had to stop, he would be one of the greats of all time. But in Rory's mind, when he gets to Augusta National, he's, he's not successful. So he just has his mind on one. Now, with the way Scotty's playing, if he remains injury-free, well, look, the odds are on that he'll get one or two more. But, you know, life's about to change for him as well. Um, I'm not saying he won't win again, but I'm saying he's about to have a little baby in the house. That changes things. Jack Nicholas famously said that about Tiger Woods. He goes, look, he's fantastic. I want to see how things go when he becomes a father. Um, so, look, I expect Scotty to win more. But those things, there's just four of them every year, and they're very, very hard to win. And the competition is always stiff. And like the, at the Augusta National Golf Club, every shot is on the razor's edge. And you just have to get on the wrong side of one bounce, and that could be the difference. So will he win more? Likely. Um, am I guaranteeing any number? Absolutely not, because I know how hard they are to, uh, to win. If... Someone had brought Scotty Scheffler to you, Mark Immelman, as, as a little <laughs> boy and said, uh, please check out my boy. Please check out his golf swing. Would you have tried, tried to change it? You know, um, I'm a bridge as a golf instructor. I'm a bridge between the old and the new. Um, I feel like the old guys, you know, they did what they could with what they had with their understanding. The new guys have the benefit of um, technology and a lot of information. But still, I feel like even with all this new stuff, and you can talk about all these theories and how force is applied and, and all these scientific methods, if you will, I still feel like golf is a very human game. I feel like golf is a game of recovery. I feel like golf is, is, a, is a mercurial game that, that loves fundamentals. So what I love about Scotty Scheffler is how Randy Smith emphasizes to this day with him fundamentals. You will see him 
before every round with his molded grip on his five iron, checking his grip, hitting clubs with that. So making sure his connection with the club is good. You'll see him checking ball position, alignment, those sorts of mundane things um, constantly. When he's on the course, you'll actually see the pre-shot routine before every shot where he grips the club, he holds it up in front of him, checks his hands before he goes anywhere. So would I have probably tried to tighten up the footwork? <laughs> Honestly, yes. Um, but would I have been true to the fundamentals that he uh, respects so highly? Definitely, yes. So, uh, so, so that's a tough question to answer because as an instructor, you want to kind of put your fingerprints on things. But it's just testament to how great Randy Smith is to allow his young man to develop like he did. All right. So all inclusive then, Mark Immelman, what is the chief attribute to Scotty Scheffler? What makes Scotty Scheffler the competitor that he is? I've oftentimes listed them in three P's. Well, now four, because now he's a putter as well. Huh. But I feel like there's poise. If you watch him, he never really shows his cards. Only once in Amen Corner coverage last week did I see him look a little flustered. And that was after a, uh, a bogey, I think it was on the 12th. But then he bounced right back with an eagle on 13 on Saturday. And so there was that where there was a little bit of wobble where you could see like, hold on, the cheeks were a little flushed, but he's just always poised. Um, he's got a whole lot of perspective. You hear him talking about the fact that golf is what I do. It's not who I am. And then there's a presence about him that's admirable. Um, all the great champions I've managed to be around and watched from a front row seat while I'm on the golf course, um, they are able to stay inordinately present. Uh, there's no forwards, there's no behinds, they're right where their feet are. So so the perspective, the poise, the presence to me are, are, are the skills where he has that stuff in buckets. Now, can he hit the ball well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, has he got all the tools? He's a five-tool guy. But I feel like what's happening between the ears is, 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 is as good, in my opinion, almost as Tiger Woods. We will continue with Mark Immelman here on the Fairways of Life show this morning. We appreciate you guys hanging around for it. When we come back, I do want to talk to him about his new book. I want to talk to him about the uh, more about the swing of Scotty Scheffler. I want to get into that a little bit more, and I want to get into that in discussion with in comparison to the swing of Nelly Corda. We have something happening in golf right now. It's at its highest competitive tiers. That is absolutely historic. It's a ride that we are all, all on together. We'll talk about that more right after this. Every January, PGA Tour Superstore pros meet every manufacturer, learn about the latest equipment, log thousands of hours of training, and together hit over 100,000 balls. All so they can get you the perfect fit. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. Ben Hogan Golf Equipment is back. Established in 1953, we serve golfers who demand excellence of their equipment. Designed by the game's best engineers, forged in the world's best foundries, and built to order in the USA. Don't settle for off-the-rack disappointment. Elevate your game with custom clubs at direct consumer pricing. Exclusively at BenHoganGolf.com. That's BenHoganGolf.com. The Gen 6 iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team, the absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're gonna love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball? Nah. Football? Got it. I think I'm going to go after PGA Tour. Playing on the PGA Tour is not easy. But you know what is easy? Getting the 524 Series from Tour Edge. Getting linebackers and home runs used to be easy. Out here, you're going to need all the easy you can get. Introducing the 524 Series from Tour Edge. The easiest clubs you'll ever hit. Even the best players in the world can use a little easy. I like the sound of that. Look out, PGA Tour. 
pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boeing Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boeing Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. Stride by Zero Friction, the first of its kind personal caddy. Walk in comfort and style with Stride's remote and follow me technology. The Stride handles almost any terrain and its 54 hole range will last all day. The lightweight design and removable front wheels makes it simple to handle. Plus it easily fits golf carts. Order yours and save. Visit zerofriction.com backslash stride or scan the QR code to order yours today. Stride, your personal caddy. As we welcome you back to the Fairways of Life show, Mark Immelman, golf broadcaster extraordinaire, is our guest. How many weeks in a month, Mark, are you playing on? The, are you on the road right now, broadcasting for whether it's PGA Tour Live or or whether it's CBS? Right now, Matty, we are about to go and embark on. We're in the midst of, I should say, a, a long run where we've got, I think, sixteen um, of the next eighteen. So. Um, basically every weekend of the month. But look, it's a thrill. Um, if you had to have told me a, a little while back, in fact, when I came on your Fairways of Life radio show many moons ago that I'd be working for CBS and for the PGA Tour and and getting to a pine about golfers like Scotty Scheffler and Rory and company, I would have said you were crazy. And uh, so it, it truly is thrilling. Yeah, it, it, you're doing a great job with it, and it's very, very fun. You, the question of the day, folks, that, that Dom – Pose today was who's the best player in the world? And he gave you a choice between Scotty Scheffler and, and Nelly Corda. And right now, 81% and change of you are saying that Scotty is the best player in the world. Uh, yesterday, uh, Caitlin Clark was drafted number one by the Indiana Fever. Are the lines between, from a fan's perspective, and who you invest your emotions in, Mark, and how excited you get about what's going on, are those lines starting to diminish in terms of how heavy they used to be a demarcation between men's sports and women's sports with what we're seeing with Caitlin? And now we have N Nellie Corder, world number one, going for her fifth. We're seeing some incredible things from the standpoint of saying, I talk to people all the time that say, no, no, I love watching the LPGA because her swings are so good, which is a perfect place to pick up with Nellie, isn't it? It truly is. And I think as far as um, those lines being blurred a little bit, I feel like here in the United States, we can get a little myopic because, you know, we figure we see things from our lens. I would say if you went to uh, South Korea, you know, I'd say that they probably think that women's golf is more popular than men's. So so I think it's a very geographic uh, in a way, but still, as far as it pertains to Nelly versus Scotty, the lines are blurred because golfers because of access to golf you know with streaming and all that sort of stuff and with social media 24 7 you know golf is 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 becoming uh, the reach is wider and nelly to me is not like tiger woods but the one thing tiger did was he transcended the boundaries of his sport and um where scotty is all golf i feel like N nelly is getting to a place where she's transcending she's blurring the lines a little bit and some of it is thanks to her last name. You know, her father was a tremendous tennis player and her brother is too. But the other thing is just because everything about her is, is, is so enticing. You know, the way she looks, the way she swings, the manner of her, the easy manner on social media. She engages with fans and fans and stuff. So, so look, I am massively impressed to, with the both of them. And it's just fun to see what they're doing. Yeah, to that point of that easy manner. And, and the golf swing is very much a part of it. I, I just told you that the question of the day that Don put up there, and if you go under the Fairways of Life YouTube page, you can vote on it yourself if you please. You know, who's the best player in the world? You're saying 82% are, are saying Scotty Scheffler right now. We asked the exact same question about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, 
of which swing would you rather have? And when I say exact same question, I mean the Scotty Scheffler between Scotty and, and Nelly. Which swing would you rather have? And 82% of you said Nelly Corda's golf swing. So with that, Mark, <laughs> if you could explain to us the golf swing of Nelly Corda. I asked you what you liked about Scotty Scheffler. What do you like about Nelly Corda? Well, first off, um, I want to say this is a guy back in the day who had a pretty golf swing. Um, I will say this, the golf swing is only as pretty as what's underneath the hood. It's like having one of those cars that has got a fantastic exterior, but no real engine. And as you look at Nelly, I mean, it is so aesthetically pleasing to me. It's almost, it's hypnotic at times. It's almost mesmerizing with the lines of it and the rhythm and the balance. It, it looks like it fell straight out of heaven. But underneath the hood, it is so impressive too, because with those that long, wide rhythmic arc, she creates a whole lot of speed. So there's power there. Her control of the club face to me is immaculate because she hits a very tight ball flight, but she hits everything. She has every shot from my experiences. And so it is super impressive. It's fundamentally sound. But again, to me, the engine, the, the insides of it are so great. And, and the way she generates speed and power is, is so under control. And it's so repetitive. You know, when I grade a golf swing, I look for three questions. Uh, number one is, does it strike the ball squarely? The swing, that is, the glove face. Number two is, does it create um, adequate leverage or maximum speed for minimum efforts? And the third question is, does it repeat under pressure? And Nelly's is a resounding yes to all three. So look, it is impressive. And, and her manner about it and her understanding of it, to me, is even more impressive because she knows exactly who she is what her tendencies are and what she's able to do under pressure. When, when you, with your position and your ability to view the game from the top tiers, how unique is it where we are right now with what we're seeing from Scotty Scheffler and the run that he is on with what we're seeing from Nelly Corda going for her fifth. She's incidentally going for her second major championship uh, victory this week. How unique is the position we're in to actually realize where, as you, to use your phrase earlier, where our feet are right now? I think we're just very fortunate. The position is unique. Um, if you think of previous dominating runs, um, you think of Seri Puck, perhaps, or, or, on the LPGA. And then, of course, you think of Annika Sorenstam. And, and then um, there, there's been a few LPGA players that have come before that. But because of social media, it was sort of very reserved to the folks that were close to it. But now because of YouTube and social media and the golf channel and, and streaming and all this sort of stuff, everybody can see it. And, and there are a few folks, there are a few outlets that are really championing the LPGA. So to be able to see both the uh, PGA tour and, uh, and of course the live league even, and, and then the LPGA, whenever you want, I think it's so cool. And me as a golf instructor still, um, and the father of a daughter now who's playing golf at a fairly high level. Um, I pay a lot of attention to the LPGA and I'm clipping Nelly's swing and, and Jin Young Ko's swing and whoever it is as much as what I am Rory McIlroy and Ludwig Aberg. So, so, so it's a really cool spot we're currently in. No doubt about that. Now, uh, speaking to you as a expert in the golf swing and a longtime coach of the same, his new book is called Lessons from the Best, Holistic Insights, Tips and tricks to improve your golf. The forward was written by Jim Nance. Uh, first question I always ask any author, Mark, is why did you write this book? What's the why? <laughs> um, I've had this inside of me for the longest time. Um, I've done a couple ebooks way back in the day, and, and they were somewhat successful. But as a young man growing up in South Africa, I learned the game by way of books. I had a club professional who was like a mentor, but more a person mentor than a golf swing mentor or a game mentor. He, he taught me a lot, but everything I learned was via book. Uh, we didn't have much golf coverage on TV back there then. And so I, I saw, I used to pull out swing sequences from Golf Digest magazines. I still have the file I would keep them in, in, in the plastic covers. And, and then I read lots of books. I've got hundreds of them. And, and so it's always been something that I wanted to do. And we got to a place now with this podcast where one day I looked over it and I looked at the number of episodes we had and I looked at some of the guests and, and just some of the insights they'd shared. And I was like, there's some kids somewhere in the world who once is like me, who can, cannot necessarily get to a Butch Harmon 
or cannot necessarily get to uh, Bob Rotella or whoever these great, you know, swing performance people are or, or, or um, physical trainers, you, you name it, because my podcast basically assembles those folks and, and helps introduce them and shine bright lights on them while folks around the world can get their insights. And so I was like, I feel like there's a lot of gold here that needs to be mined and kind of put in one place. And for those folks who aren't into podcasting, it's a great idea. And then I've gotten lots of requests too for, for transcripts of my podcast. Now mine's self produced, so I don't have time to go through the thing and, and make a good transcript thereof. So, so it was a, it was a labor of love and it's just always been inside. And I'm thankful to Jim Siter and the folks at back nine uh, publishing uh, that they gave me a chance to, to, to bring this thing to life. It's been, a, it's been, it's been an honor. And is the book out right now, Mark, or when will it come out? It's available for pre-sale right now. It, it'll be out um, sort of mid, mid-summer-ish around June, I would say. So right now is available for pre-sale. Okay. So give us a glimpse of something that's within the book that our, our listening and viewing audience can benefit from. What pearl is in there that you would say is, is one that's applicable immediately? Well, each chapter is basically a chapter about a guest. So there's a chapter from David Ledbetter, and there's a chapter from Max Homer, and there's a chapter from Jordan Spieth. And so each chapter is basically the podcast where I go through the podcast and I I just pull out some of the nuggets, some of the insights that they've shared. And then I elaborate on them because obviously they touch on something, but the whole message is sometimes not given Um, because I'm a big one for understanding. I think information is power. But so many folks have information, but they don't apply it correctly. So you can uh, go in there and I'll take something from Jordan Spieth because it's top of mind. Uh, He shared some incredible insights about pitching and chipping and bunker play and how he's wedged. He talked about the amount of bounce. He's only got zero degrees of bounce on his lofted wedge. And he spoke about how he he plays every short game shot to hold it. And it's a mindset. And he acknowledged that there's risks with that, but you know he's going with a reward over the risk. And then at the end of the uh, conversation, I asked him, okay, Jordan, um, if you had to write your memoirs or tell young Sammy, okay, this is what I know for sure. He thought for a second and he said, it's not the critic who counts. And I looked at him, I was like, hmm. And then he said, you know, Mark, and I paraphrase, he goes, I was really good. And then my game fell off and I started to listen to some of the criticism. And now he says, in looking back, because I've went through the doldrums and my game is trending back up. If I had not listened to all the noise, I might've come back a little quicker. He goes, because as it turns out, everything I was doing, everything that people, pundits, if you will, were critiquing is actually what everyone's trying to do right now. So he goes, it's not the critic who counts. And I feel like as a holistic tip for someone, That is so good because as soon as we play badly, we turn around, we look at someone or we listen to some critic. And sometimes that can be detrimental. That's absolutely brilliant. This is why we love Mark Emblem and we are so proud of what you are doing and continue to do in your march through the game and the way you are giving back. His podcast is called On the Mark. Uh, You can find it wherever you get your audio content. And of course, the new book is out right now for pre-order. Mark, thank you so much for your time. The game is about hope. The game is about the if and embracing the most uh, both. And we appreciate that you would give us as much time as you have today. Matt, I'm eternally thankful to you and it's an honor to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. If you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and not lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. We'll be back with more of the Fairways of Life show right after this. I got ball fit in 2000, went on a little run. Then Bridgestone fit me again, and I went on another run. I just got fit again for the new Tour BX. The ball fitting's been helping me. Will it help you?
Boeing Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boeing Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boeing Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boeinggolf.com. I think when you're training for other sports or you're what why most people go to the gym is so that they can like have muscles and you know be strong and be healthy and a lot of the reason why they struggle to play golf is their body doesn't move properly for them to be able to hit a golf ball and when you're training for golf it's a little bit different because you're focused more on flexibility and mobility and being uh, strong in motion when you're able to kind of have a warm-up and have a workout routine and kind of gradually build up to where you're training your body to move properly yeah you're gonna get a lot of big dividends on the golf course Every January, PGA Tour Superstore pros meet every manufacturer, learn about the latest equipment, log thousands of hours of training, and together hit over 100,000 balls. All so they can get you the perfect fit. What if we started a company and the company was under no time constraints, no financial constraints? The one constraint is their clubs had to be exceptional performers and much better than any other alternative. I was told time and again, it'll never work. It worked like a house of fire. And I'll tell you what, I think our customers love it. BXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Stride by Zero Friction, the first of its kind personal caddy. Walk in comfort and style with Stride's remote and follow me technology. The Stride handles almost any terrain and its 54 hole range will last all day. The lightweight design and removable front wheels makes it simple to handle. Plus it easily fits golf carts. Pick up your Stride today at a local PGA Tour Superstore near you or at zerofriction.com backslash Stride. Stride, your personal caddy. As we welcome you back to the Fairways of Life show. All right, Dom. So, uh, from what I understand, you're getting hammered on on the discussion board this morning because of your question of who was the best player in the world right now. And you gave two choices, Scotty Scheffler and Nelly Corda. And last time I checked in with you, it was around 82% for Scotty Scheffler. Has that balanced at all? Is it mitigated? Yeah, it, it, it actually went up into like the 86% range with Scotty, but then Mark Immelman came on the show and started talking about how Nelly's swing is hypnotic and shit's incredible, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are with Nelly at 24, 24% now, and Scheffler's dropped to uh, 76% currently. So read into that as you may. <laughs> All right, so when, when we were talking about the leaderboard at the Masters, is Scotty Scheffler winning – his second Masters, finishing four shots clear atop the leaderboard on 11 under par. Second place belongs to Ludwig Obert. And his rounds of 73, 69, 70, and 69 are incredibly impressive. Obviously, on Sunday, the snafu, the thing that got him, which which wasn't terribly unusual given the field, but nonetheless, it, it was definitive, a sense of, of being definitive at the time that it took place, although I loved his, his resolution. I loved the way that he smiled afterwards. Ludwig Obert, just to, to take a look at him compared to Tiger, just from the sense of where does he stand? And, and, I, and these questions are important to me in the world of sport, right? Where does somebody fit? That was the discussion we started with with Scotty Scheffler today. Ludwig turned pro at 23 years old. Tiger turned to 20. In his first 20 starts as a professional, Ludwig has one victory in six top fives. Incredibly impressive. And that's the reason why he is in the top 10. Tiger Woods, in his first 20 starts, had five wins in 12 top fives. It's, it's head shaking when you start to compare numbers of what Tiger did. It's the same way with Jack Nicklaus. When you start to really look and delve into the numbers, 
And what's incredible is when you look at career averages, percentage career averages, top 10s, top 25s, et cetera, et cetera. And then you realize that in the case of Jack Nicholas and now building in the case of Tiger Woods, as they've gotten older and their performance has obviously diminished as compared to the height of their prowess, their percentages come down. So at, at some point, you, it'd be fun to take a look at it and go, no, we're only going to look at it at the height of who they were, at the height of all their powers and how impressive those numbers were. Cannot wait for the golf that lies uh, in store. I'm really excited about this chance to witness history with Nelly Corda and what she's doing. It is that significant. And we will be talking about it some more as the week progresses. I am excited too. I'd mentioned to you that uh, we're going to be joined by one of the most important voices in the world of golf. And when you talk about that, there's a lot of ways to measure something like that, but not the least of which is when this individual is the president and CEO of one of the biggest companies in the industry. Well, what does that mean? That means it has a direct impact on all of you. Chances are, better or not, most of you at one time or another are going to have hit or played some element of their equipment so that philosophy finds its way into your golf bag. David Abelese will be coming up on the show tomorrow. I'm really excited to speak to him as well. We also have a major champion coming on the show tomorrow to try to sort all things. And in particular, to have a discussion about you win a major championship, how does life change? How does it change your expectations for yourself? And how do you deal with the same? So we'll be talking about all of those things as we continue our march in the Fairways of Life show, which we are thankful that you have been a part of the walk along the way. Thank you to Mark Immelman for joining us today, too. And good luck with the new book that Mark has out there. His new book is called Lessons from the Best, Holistic Insights, Tips, and Tricks to Improve Your Golf. Until we are together again, be well. Goodbye for now.